Uh, so something which is very common, which happens to a lot of young girls and women is where their personal information or their phone numbers are uploaded onto websites or social media uh, with information saying that these women are sex workers when they're not. Uh, and then they tend to be harassed uh, through a lot of calls uh, uh, by random men, uh, pretty much, which tend to be also then a form of sexual harassment. So a cybercrime in short is of course any crime which will happen in the cyber or digital space. Um, one of the most common types of cybercrimes we come across is what's called revenge porn. Uh, revenge porn is when an intimate image of yourself or what we call a nude pic is uh, shared or distributed or even uploaded into either an instant messaging group, social media or a website without your consent. Uh, usually the perpetrators of the revenge porn tend to be uh, an intimate partner, so your boyfriend or even your husband or your ex-boyfriend or your ex-husband. Um, another type of cybercrime that is very common is what's called doxing. Uh, doxing is where your personal information, where this information is uploaded without your consent uh, on a cyber digital space and then that information is used to harass you in some ways. Uh, sexual harassment in the cyberspace would be where you're receiving messages, unsolicited messages of a sexual nature. Uh, these messages can also include sexual exposure. Uh, that is where someone is sending an intimate picture of them to you without your permission. Um, you also have, of course, cyber threats and that's a more severe form of cyber harassment. So a cyber threat would be a message that you get on your social media uh, threatening to harm you in some way. Cyber financial crime would be where um, your personal details are taken to conduct a financial activity uh, either without your consent or which would put you in a, in a detrimental position or even you're with your consent, but without knowing the full extent of what that information is being used for. You should not uh, give more attention. So basically the people, uh, they are putting comments and the bad comments, they are telling different, different things for your post. So I think the first thing you have to do, that you should not uh, read that comments, uh, you know, uh, repeatedly just read the comment and just close the post or just remove yourself from that person and just untag yourself from the post uh, take a deep breath and don't be aggressive just don't uh, reply them the at the first moment so what you have to do is you have to take a little while and you have to think what you have to comment on those comments then think wise and then comment if you think that nobody no one helped you uh, that's not true. There will be a lot of people to help you. Just seek uh, help from your friends. First thing is tell to your best friend that you are a victim of cyberbullying. They will definitely help you. So I became a victim of cyberbullying and I had a lot of friends to help me out. And today I am uh, I'm strong enough to face all kind of bullying and discriminations based on my sexual orientation or anything first thing that you need to know is what are the rights that are violated and do you have any laws that actually would help you in that situation before you actually go to a lawyer and first of all you need to know there are no specific sections that really provide for uh, cyber violence in Sri Lanka especially in terms of the cyber crimes that happen mostly to women or children but um, you can look at section 345 which deals with sexual harassment 372 coupled with 483 that deals with extortion as well as criminal intimidation which is generally what's used to kind of uh, for revenge porn or to kind of manipulate women into sending nudes for example um, apart from that you also have obscene publications act and the computer crimes act that helps you if you're um, content has been put out there without your authorization. But how do you exactly find a lawyer? I would say you have to explore your options. 
The easiest option would be provided by the government would be to go to the Legal Aid Commission, where they will give you a lawyer to fight your case. You can also reach out to iPro Bono, which is a pro bono legal service that helps mostly vulnerable communities or vulnerable minorities. You can also look at taking matters to your own hands, which means you can go ahead and file a complaint to CERT, or you can go to the CID Cyber Crimes Division. So that's basically how you would find a lawyer, or you could find your own way into the legal system to fight your own case.